Hold on here. Here's the on-screen display. Gotcha. That uh, is used. Here is the configurator software that we use to modify the craft's initial settings in different views. Okay, you got it now. Yep. You can also do that through the on screen display as well. So there's a config fig mode, setup mode, you can change PIDs. Yes, so uh, uh, you can see uh, our, our pilot, he's uh, flipping through the different on-screen display uh, options there. So uh, one of the great things about our system is that you could set this up in the field if there's any mo uh, quick mods that need to get made before the mission. Uh, it's fully configurable, not only from that uh, configuration software that you've seen, but also in the field using this OSD screen, on-screen display screen. So you, I could also point out just the screen itself, upper right-hand corner it shows a flight time. That 100% shows our RSSI input, that's uh, the quality of signal from the, uh, from the transmitter. Uh, he turned it off, now he turned it back on. In the middle of the screen there, you can see the 528 milliamp hours. That's how, uh, how much battery we've, we've consumed. And then the 11.9 volts and the 0.8 amps is what the uh, current uh, voltage and current is uh, de detected by the AeroQuad board. And in that upper left-hand corner is our uh, altitude uh, indicator uh, in, in meters. And in the middle of the screen, you can see that there's a, a, a looks like a target in the middle, has an S in there. The AeroQuad has two different flight modes. It has uh, rate mode and attitude mode. And you can see our pilots turning it on and off. In rate mode, that's gyro control only. If the, uh, we do acrobatics on time to time. So if uh, the mission requires that, you could do acrobatics. Uh, if you, if you, you see it with S on, that's in uh, attitude mode or stable mode. And uh, that uh, takes advantage of our uh, IMU. So it'll, it, a very strong flight assist. It will uh, uh, provide very stable flight for the pilot. Uh, during uh, during usage, that arrow that's turning in the middle is our return to home. So when you when we powered up our arrow quad, it has a GPS on board, and uh, as we fly around, you'll see that uh, arrow move, uh, indicating to the pilot uh, which direction is the takeoff point. So down in the middle, as you can see, is the distance from our. Uh, our, our takeoff point and in the bottom looks like coordinates so that's uh, data coming from the GPS and in the lower right hand corner is our speed indicator. Great, uh, good description there. Um, and are you able, to, can you show us a quick, uh, a quick uh, snapshot of the actual UAV um, from your webcam or however to, whatever camera you're using? Yes. Why don't you bring it over? So, uh, okay, so can you see, what, what are you seeing now? Uh, I believe we're seeing Ted underwater. Come here, come here. Or, that may be, I'm not sure. <laughs> Ted underwater, is, is he holding a quad now? No, he might be getting some lag here. Uh, Do I need to move closer? All we see is the profile picture. Oh, there we go. And, uh, there we go. We got you now. Good. Okay, so there's the UAV. Yep, it has the AeroQuad shield right on top of there. And then we're configured in Y6, which means it's a Y shape, two motors on each arm. And here's a, vid a video system right here. Great. And uh, can you show us a, a quick uh, a quick shot of the actual uh, ground control station or uh, whatever the, the pilot chooses? You wanna, it's that. You mean like my laptop setup? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I wouldn't use a laptop. Oh, it's la okay, yes. Yeah. Laptop based software. Laptop There's the OSD and the in the Here's the transmitter with the high frequency radio. So one thing to note, the laptop's not required. Actually, just a video uh, capture system would be cuz you could also just uh, use the on-screen display for uh, uh, for all the setups requir required. Gotcha. Okay, great guys. So our uh, our next step here will be to uh, we can go in and uh, keep your UAV where it is. 
that's that's a great perch, uh, perch location where we'll take off from there. So if you guys would, uh, first of all, I need to make sure do you have your cameras rolling? Um, your HD cameras or however you're going to be recording this. We do. You got, um, Good, great. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and uh, start this? up your UAV, oh. and I'm going to give you a list of what we're going to go through here. Um, we just want you to take off from that location and hover for a moment and then go from hovering and ascend to about a 10 foot, 15 foot air, um, height, and then descend back to hovering, you know, three, four feet off the ground. Okay. Three, four feet. About 15 feet. You guys getting that video okay? Yeah, we're getting great, thank you. Should I hold here or land? Uh, you can, if you just want to go in and bring it back down to about three or four foot where you're starting. All right, and what we'd like to do now is uh, that table will provide a perfect spot. If you can just do a 360 degree circle around that table and bring it back to that, uh, that white board on the ground. So what we'll do now is we'll just treat that starting location as your final landing location and just go in and land back there on the whiteboard. Fantastic. So um, we have we have uh, quite a bit of time there. That's that's actually all that we have part of the script for this. Is there anything else you guys wanted to show us? Uh, advanced behaviors or any kind of any other kind of UAV demonstrations you want to use at the time we have? Yeah, we uh, understood from the uh, script that we had an opportunity to show some of the innovation that what makes AirQuad innovative. So we're good to go. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, you can. I think. Wait. I want. Yeah, I want to tell you about a little bit about the AirQuad uh, community. We're six thousand members strong. Uh, we have a very active uh, user forum. Uh, we have very detailed documentation. Uh, I've I've uh, submitted it in the uh, application. Uh, online and uh, what the heart of what makes the AeroQuad uh, multi-copter very strong is that we use open source hardware. We use a uh, thing called the Arduino as a flight controller and what the community has developed, we've uh, developed these shields and what they do is they plug right into the microcontroller. And so uh, what's on these shields is all the sensors that are required to make the uh, AeroQuad fly, the gyros, accelerometers, uh, magnetometer, barometer and even inputs for an ultrasonic sensor. And so um, this is a very flexible system because if the, a, a future mission requires something new, we sh should have the ability just to uh, create a new shield, plug it into our uh, microcontroller, mount it in the AeroQuad, and we're good to go. So because we have such a flexible hardware architecture, we have a very strong software architecture to complement it. And so uh, things are organized in libraries. We have, uh, for example, we have a sensor library for each one of our sensors. So if a new sensor uh, needs to be generated, we could do it in the uh, confines of our software architecture, uh, get it implemented, it, get it implemented, and it should uh, fit seamlessly within our uh, flight software. In addition to our Part, our our uh, microcontroller and our uh, architecture. We also have a uh, uh, a frame structure that uh, goes along with it. So you could see this is our cyclone frame. You could configure with the same hardware. You could co uh, configure your AeroQuad for X or Plus mode in a, a four motor format, or like what you've seen our pilot uh, Francis fly. This is another look, a little bit cleaned up, uh, but. Uh, uh, this is a, a Y6. We have 10 different configurations that we could set up with the same hardware. Easy to manufacture, uh, very easy materials to work with, uh, lo uh, available locally to us. And uh, uh, there's 10 different uh, hardware configurations that can be uh, set up. And why is that important? Uh, I don't believe every mission is going to be the same. So if you need uh, to ha carry a heavier payload, we could set up this frame structure for an octo config. You could carry a heavy uh, uh, payload. Or if you need to go light, you could go with a uh, quad and uh, fly quickly to your destination. So in addition to uh, our system, our complete system, 
the, the, the features that are also unique that we believe to the AeroQuad is that strong OSD system that you've seen. You could set up a configuration in the field. Uh, you could uh, tune the AeroQuad. Uh, we use PID as our control law. You could set those settings uh, if necessary. Uh, there's different options that you could set up with the, uh, um, the, the battery levels and transmitter levels and such. Uh, you see that we have GPS integrated into our system, so we're going to be able to auto-fly based on waypoints set up in our, our, our software. Uh, because we have the ability to integrate different pieces of hardware into our system, it was very easy for us to integrate the ultrasonic sensors. So now that uh, gives us the auto-land capability, uh, obstacle avoidance, we have that in the works. So uh, we believe we have a very strong system that can uh, compete in this uh, competition. If, uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, please let us know. We're really happy to be able to show this to you today. Great, I'm glad you guys were able to make it as well. Yeah, um, and thanks for accommodating the time. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, is there any other, uh, any other blanks that you wanted to show us? It's not necessary, I'm just, we, we, uh, we have the time here if you wanted, to, if you wanted to show anything else. Can we add it to the post video? Will we be adding it to the uh, post video? This is not, not necessarily. Um, what we'll do is, um, is we can, from the, the original video we took from the scripts, we'd like to, um, to get that from you guys within the next couple hours. Okay. And then within 24 hours, we would want you to incorporate um, some of that script. You can, you, can, you can edit it and splice it as you feel. Uh, and then incorporate some other you know, advanced behaviors or whatever else you'd like to, to include in the video. Um, we actually keep it around 90 seconds, two minutes, um, and um, get that to us in 24 hours, and we'll be ready to go. So I just wanted to be so, clear, we're going to upload our raw footage, but when we edit it, are we allowed to take, just to cut it up and reduce some sections, or you just want the raw edit section first and then anything, uh, anything beyond that for, that for the 90 seconds? You can cut it up however you would like. Okay. To, however you like. Um, just keep in mind that this we would like to see um, each of the steps from that video, meaning uh, we'd like to see the ascent to 10 feet, the descent, and the 360 degrees, and the landing. So now you can cut the cut the scenes out that are between each of those. Okay, very good. And then include whatever else you would like to include uh, in the video. Okay. So no, you're not limited to, to or you're not required to include the entire raw script. But what, uh, what I will tell you is this, what, what we're recording right now uh, will also be uh, you know, viewed by our staff as well. Or we have um, uh, a judging panel that reviews these things. Um, so in addition to the crowd, we also have the ability, if there's anything else you wanted to show right now with this raw footage, um, to the crowd to see, or for the judges and us to see. So it's, it's not required. Altitude time? Okay. Let's do altitude hold. You want to? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is he seeing through our state? How do we want to see it? Yeah. Let's. Uh, we'll we'll put it the uh, air quad up in the air. We'll put it in altitude hold, but we'll show it to you through the OSD screen. Sounds great. One thing to note, we also have a heading hold lock. So uh, we have a magnetometer on board. You could lock the heading, you could lock the altitude. And is it on? Yeah. So altitude hold is on. Uh, I don't know, maybe we could uh, pan over to the pilot, Francis, and just show that he's not touching the uh, throttle stick. So if you look at, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, show, show the air quad, it's really solid in the air. Quite a bit windy today, but... Yeah, and that's uh, one thing to note, we, uh, it's, it's a bit windy over here. Should be able to tell by the OSD what height it's keeping. And we have a panic mode too, in case I need it. Okay, OSD, it's off. Pad it's off. It's off. Yeah. Okay. I'm just descending now. All right. So altitude hold is off. And we can home. do low altitude hold too, based on ultrasonic. So. So I didn't know if you caught that. We have an ultrasonic sensor on the bottom right now. 
so we could do low altitude hold. Um, the altitude hold that you've seen previously up there was just uh, based on the barometer, but now we're able to fuse the two uh, uh, data to together and we're doing low altitude hold now. Okay, gotcha. We believe you know, the, the pilot is gonna, if he's looking through a uh, uh, on-screen display, the, the field of view is very narrow. So there are many things that uh, we've done to just assist the pilot to make it easier uh, flying remotely, especially to a, a two plus mile distance. Now I'm just on it. Great. We appreciate everything. Uh, and I'm not sure if you had anything else you were going to show us, but uh, if not, um, we'll, we'll we'll see your see your video. I guess in a few a couple hours. And, okay. And uh, and then we'll see the, the the full edited video in 24 hours. And uh, best of luck to you guys. All right, we're really excited about this, and uh, we, uh, we believe we have a strong uh, entry. And uh, thanks for the for this opportunity. Absolutely, thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right, I want to get some 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 bonus footage. Okay. Flip it, bro. So <laughs> now we, we're flipping.